Morning pot pickers, how are we today? Hope you're well. This morning, we have the Astley Bent something or other. Kind of a Dublin, not quite. It's an interesting shape actually. It's a bit of a, it's like curves in and then back out. So I don't know what you'd call this. I'm not sure it's a classic Dublin, but something like it. Very nice pipe. And in it, we have some plum pudding, Seattle Pipe Club. It's been a while since I've smoked this. This particular um, bowlful comes from a jar from around 2016. remembered I've got two ladders in my car at the moment um, I usually when I'm doing a wedding I take a ladder with me so that I can do high angle shots and um, a videographer a friend of mine he was sending a colleague to a wedding that I was working at this week and he didn't have a ladder so he asked me to take a ladder for him when I got there he had the ladder so that was a bit of a waste of time but never mind but that's still in the car, so they're, they're rattling against each other. So if there is a bit of noise, I do apologize. I should have taken it out when I forgot. Um, yes, yeah, so smoking some Seattle Pipe Club plum pudding. Trying to see if it's smoothed out a bit. Possibly. Um, a couple of things I wanted to talk about this morning, pipe related. Firstly, I was on um, Ben's live last night, Ben the Old Soul, previously known as Unicorn Piper, a very interesting um, live feed. He was talking about the blind tasting from Mike at Briar Blues. in the video maybe half an hour three quarters of an hour in which I think is essential listening which I think is essential listening for all new pipe smokers it talks about the initial flavors talks about the initial flavors that we get when we smoke a tobacco, whether it's a tobacco, whether it's a whiskey, whether it's food. And he makes a very, very good point and he makes it very succinctly and it's worth listening to. In terms of the blind tasting, um, Ben too concluded that it was a McClellan Virginia, straight Virginia, but as it turns out, um, it was McClelland 2015, which is a vapor. Um, I didn't get any Perique, I must say. I don't know if it uh, mellowed out over time, uh, but I, 
if there is Perika there, it must be a smidgen, because I didn't, I didn't detect it. Uh, but it was a very interesting uh, exercise. video to do a VR to Busy Izzy, Izzy Happy Go Lucky Piper. He has reached the 500 subscriber milestone. What a great milestone that is, a great achievement there Izzy. Very very impressive. And for good reason, you're a very, very respected member of the YTBC. Very warm, very tender. Lots of words of wisdom. And a very calming effect on the YTBC. Congratulations on a great achievement. I think nowadays, because of all the shout outs that people do, um, which is a fantastic feature of the YTPC, a good example of the warmth and welcoming uh, approach members have to each other. Um, I think that people can, if they do get seen by the people who do shout outs, they can quite easily get up to a couple of hundred subscribers quite quickly. But moving from that on to something like four or five hundred, that um, that's got to mean something, you know, that, that's an achievement. I'm not saying that 100 and 200 isn't. When I first started, 100 was a huge achievement and it still is for a lot of people. Um, but once you get past that sort of kickstart that you get from the core circle of people who do the shout outs, subscribers often come in as a trickle effect um, but to reach 500 is a big big score it's a big achievement and uh, congratulations on that Izzy we're fortunate to get uh, quite close 
get to know each other quite well. We've met in Israel as well, which was a, a privilege. And um, I think it's wonderful that we uh, got to know each other through the YTPC. Ask the question. Um, you ask people to give you a VR on how 2018 has fared for you. What changes have you had in 2018? What significant happenings have happened in 2018 in your pipe smoking? Well, for me, there's um, two things really. I mean, I'm sure other things have happened as well, but two things that come to mind. Number one is moving over to filtered pipes. I've made no secret of that. It's well known that I've moved to nine mil pipes. Um, although the actual light bulb moment happened at the end of 2017, but 2018 was really the year when it really took shape. Around December 20. 17 I was really getting very frustrated with uh, tongue bite and I was really struggling with it and I was kind of smoking cigars almost exclusively at that stage and I just couldn't deal with the tongue bite and um, so I started experimenting with different forms of filtration I uh, used filter pads I used um, uh, Nording keystones I tried those little um, little tubes the three mil tubes to put in your stem I tried a number of things and nothing really worked. I can't say that they didn't have any effect, but, but nothing had the desired effect. And then I tried 9mm. And that was it, job done. Completely changed my whole experience. Tongue bite was blown a, a death blow. I was able to smoke again but not only that I was able to completely expand and broaden my horizons when it comes to tobaccos um, so I was able to smoke Virginia's vapors and this year as you all know I've been on um, pretty much smoking vapors most of the year it's only just now recently that I've started to have the occasional Latakia bowl So that's number one. Um, the second thing um, I've got to say is um, my pipe carving. Um, I've played dabbled with it, you know, uh, from a hobbyist point of view every so often, maybe once a year for the past couple of years during my holiday times. Um, and I've carved, as you've seen, uh, two or three pipes um, in the last two years. And then in the last few months, I carved another two or three pipes. And each time I do one, I seem to uh, succeed a little bit more. So as you've seen, I've started to explore the possibilities of whether I could cut the mustard, if you like, in terms of um, carving pipes. My quest for that is moving on. Um, I now have uh, the sander, the belt sander. I've bought a shop vacuum cleaner, um, which is designed for, for this, this kind of use. It can be attached to various machines. Hopefully we'll have a drill press later on today. I've got a small rotary tool, like a Dremel type tool. Um, those were the key things which I had identified, uh, which
which I really needed to get in order to have a, a basic attempt at pipe carving in any kind of meaningful way. Um, I haven't bought the most expensive equipment, I haven't bought the, the cheapest equipment. I bought medium range um, and the idea of it is, is that I don't want to spend a lot of money on something which may not happen. So I've spent an amount of money which I think that if it ends up not happening, it's stuff which will be useful for me to have without having had too much expenditure. And at the same time, if things do take off um, and money allows in the future, then I can always upgrade and not worry about having spent too much money on equipment which I'm upgrading and not using. So that's, that's the rationale. So we shall see, we shall see how it goes and uh, I'll take you along for the ride, as it were. There's the machine marked opposite there, that's where I've been getting my uh, tools from. I've been looking online at um, vices for um, because I'll be using the drill press. I've been looking at various different types of vices to put on the drill press to hold the block while I'm drilling. And um, I think I'm going to be getting a, something which is called a cross vice, so that you can sight the block but move it laterally, so I can line up the drill and then move it across to actually where I'm going to drill it. That looks like a pretty useful tool, so I'm going to try that. Anyway, the weekend is here. I wish you all well. Hope to see you all tomorrow night on London Calling. I'll be aiming for around 11, 11.30, something like that. Wish you all a fantastic weekend. And I will catch you on the next one.